All right, so we last left off at the skull. Um, we were about to go into it. Um, so we're gonna start over the image of the skull, make it a little easier for us to uh, go through the process of locating the individual portions. And we can try to make this quick. All right, so let's get back to the skull and let's look at the image here. All right, so the general skull. Uh, we already talked about the, uh, the bigger sections in terms of the uh, the bigger bones, uh, the flat bones. We talked about the frontal bone, right? We talked about the parietal on the sides, the frontal, obviously the forehead, the parietal at the top and also sides. We talked about the occipital, which is at the very back and the base, and we talked about the temporal, which will be found on the sides. So now we're going to go a little bit into the um, more portions of it. One item that I uh, mentioned that we didn't talk about last was the coronal sutures. All right, so as you can see here, there is a separation between the individual skulls, right? Generally, if you were to think of your skull before ever seeing an image of you, you would think it was one whole item, but it is not. It is a um, bunch of pieces of bones, uh, fly bones put together. All right, so starting from here, as you can see, there's a coronal skull uh, suture. And you may remember coronal when we talked about the planes, right? When we said that it was a coronal division, that means we're dividing the, the body into a front and a back. Or if a dorsal and a ventral, right? So here the idea is still the same, right? So as you can see, the coronal suture is separating um, the frontal from the um, parietal, right? Here we have the square muscle suture, right? As you can see, that's separating the parietal from the temporal bone, right? And at the very back, we have the lambdoid, uh, lambdoid suture, right? Which is separating the parietal from the occipital. Right? At the very base here, um, right past the uh, the process, right, you can see uh, that we have the external auditory meatus, and we just covered meatus if you um, uh, think in the last item, right, so meatus is just an opening, right. Um, now here we have our mandible, the lower jaw. Now you notice that the lower jaw has a major connection here, right. So this would be the temporal mandibular, mandibular joint, or right, the TMJ. All right. Um, getting a little bit closer here, we have the coronal process. Okay. Now um, we already mentioned the lower jaw. The upper jaw is the maxilla, as you can see, it's holding up the top of the uh, the tooth. Here we have the nasal bone itself, and we have the nasal septum. Right, which we're not seeing, but if you have two of the nasal bones, right, the septum will be the very division of that. And um, I'll see if I can get an image that um, better suits that. All right, so again, up closer to the um, back to the top here, we have your uh, the orbital cavity. Obviously, that's where your eyes will be housed. Right. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to see if I can get an image um, so that we can have an image of. Uh, the inside so we can look inside of it. Alright now this is not an image of um, that I want to show you yet but I wanted to just uh, kind of show to you uh, so just to go back to the idea of the skull itself being separated. Alright so this gives you a very good image of what the separations are. Alright so as you can see here you see how the parietal both the left and the right are right, both separated from the frontal all right, and both can be lifted up um, and at the bottom here, at the base, we have the occipital, and on the sides, we have the, uh, the temporal bone. Obviously, this would be the left side of it, and that would be on the right side of it. And we have both sides of the zygomatic, the cheekbones, and then we have the maxilla, the upper jaw, and the mandible, the lower jaw. And as we mentioned before, here would be the temporal mandibular joint. All right, so that was just to kind of um, get back to what I was mentioning before. All right, so now this image here gives us a better picture also of um, the other bones that we didn't mention. All right, so we're already familiar with the frontal, parietal, occipital, uh, once again, temporal, mandibular, maxilla, uh, and the nasal bones. Two other items, and of course, zygomatic. Two other items that we haven't talked about, really, are some smaller bones on the inside, uh, ethmoid and sphenoid. All right, two of my favorite bones, so we're going to go over those um, as well. All right, so now, when I say that <coughs> two other, these are two of my favorites, is because of... Um, how they actually look and where they located. All right, so this is the um, the sphenoid bone. All right, so this is essentially located right about the middle um, part of the skull. All right, essentially what it does is uh, it forms a a great wedge between all the other bones and um, pretty much brings them together. 
right? Now, if you look at it, this looks kind of like a bat, right? So this is always one of the easiest item to remember, right? Has the greater wing, the lesser wing, um, has the slit, right? We talked about. Uh, so this is one of the easiest ones to remember. Now uh, we're not going to go over the um, uh, things like the optical foramen or the suborbital fissures, the uh, foramen rotunda, ovale, and so on and so forth. Because that, that thing that's a bit more um, AMP. Uh, so this is more medical terminology. So I'm going to stick to just uh, talking about the general features of the actual uh, item itself and what what it does. All right. So let's see if I can also get you an image of the uh, F my bone so that we can uh, keep going. All right, so what you're looking at here is an image of the, uh, the F my bone. Um, and essentially, the F my is um, it, it kind of makes out the bone around. If you take a look at it, makes out the bone around the the orbital, right? The nasal right? and things like that, uh, and the eyes really, um, orbit in the eyes. Uh, we won't get into um, Cristogali and any of those things because I believe that's a bit more. AMP more so than uh, medical terminology. All right, so back to um, where we were. Uh, so we already talked about the major sections of the skull. Um, some little things to know about things like let's say the maxilla. Um, maxilla. All right. All right, the maxilla, the upper jaw. Uh, essentially, what it does it is fuse um, by the midline. Um, forms the upper jaw and uh, hard palate, right? Which is essentially the roof of the mouth. Hey, what am I doing there? All right, essentially the roof of the mouth. <clears throat> All right. Um, and if you ever heard of um, a congenital disorder called cleft palate, then um, you may have you may know what I'm referring to. All right. Uh, we already mentioned the nasal bones, so nothing to go into the nasal bone. We didn't talk about the lacrimal bones, but essentially the lacrimal bones are at the corner of the eye. Um, and this is where you find the connection of the lacrimal sac coming out. All right. um, I don't believe I mentioned the vomer, which is the separation of the two nostrils. All right. I, I think I, I may have mentioned the bottom of it um, when I was talking about the nasal septum, but I didn't talk about the actual separation, which is the vomer. All right. Uh, we already mentioned the uh, zygomatic the cheekbones. Um, now I don't believe we've gone over the sinuses yet. All right, so let me get you an image of the uh, paranasal sinuses. Okay, so this is a nice and simple image of the paranasal sinuses. All right, so at the very top, all right, you have the frontal sinus, which obviously you can see where the name is coming from. You see it right above the, right below the uh, frontal bone, and right above the uh, the nasal bone itself. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, going back towards uh, backwards a little bit, I defer its back. Uh, we have the sphenoid sinus. Right? So you can also see like the general uh, location of the individual bones also. All right, at the very bottom, um, maxillary because remember upper jaw was the maxilla. Um, and then here we have the ethnoid, uh, ethmoid sinuses. All right, so again, this gives you a really general uh, good view of where the sinuses are located and that's all you really ever have to know by the location right? or any image that's given to you you can always just simply tell uh, just by looking at it so if you look at it from the side right, you can see that this will be on the top by the middle uh, this is further back and this is um, somewhere in the middle location if you're looking at the image from this view then again frontal sinus at the very top uh, it's more here and it will be a little bit harder for you to see but if you can tell, if you ever felt right above your nose or just a little bit below when you're sick, you'll be able to, or even right between your um, your eye, your two eyes, right? You'll be able to kind of feel uh, when it gets tender, uh, a little tender and a little pain when you have some sort of headache or, <coughs> excuse me, if you have uh, some sort of uh, nasal congestion or something in that nature. All right, so that should be able to, that covers that. Um, we already covered the thorax region, so we, there's nothing else to cover on that. For the vertebrae, I didn't go in depth with the vertebrae, so let me see if I can get you the image that we worked with earlier for the vertebrae. Alright, let's go back here. I believe we saw it right over here, and Google will find it for us again. Uh, skeletal system. 
<clears throat> and I think this is the image that we use, so we might as well continue using it. All right, so looking at the skeletal, the vertebrae, we didn't talk about it before. So from the very top, right, from the um, axis um, going down here all the way to the um, to the very bottom. All right, so at the very top, you have your first seven sets. All right, your first seven set corresponds to your neck, obviously, so that would be called a cervical vertebrae. Because remember, cervical, as we talked about earlier, uh, is for the neck. All right, so the next 12, all right, the next 12 would be corresponding to your thoracic cavity. So that would be a thoracic uh, vertebrae. Um, at the bottom here, remember that when we talked about the um, body parts, right, we said that the lower, the lower sides here were your lumbar. So that means the last five here are we lumbar um, vertebrae. And at the very bottom, where you see this big thick um, bones that are fused together, the vertebrae fused together here. All right, that would be your sacral. And at the very bottom of it, your coccyx. Right, and the sacral uh, for a better part is uh, div divided. Um, until it fuses together eventually um, after you, you know, after birth. All right, so that should be able to cover the vertebral column, and that should be it for us. All right.